What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another free ketogenic recipe just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to help show your support for my channel. Now today we're going to be making a ketogenic onion ring, but not just any ketogenic onion ring. You guys know in the last few videos I've been telling you if you can think of anything you want me to make a keto version of to leave it down in the comment section. And today's video was brought to you by this comment. Now, as you can see, they wanted a ketogenic onion ring that had no almond flour. And further down in the conversation, we ruled out coconut flour as well. So this led to me discovering some really cool things with protein powder, which I will probably be using in future recipes. Again, with this video, if you guys want me to make anything into a keto recipe, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. And as always, the full written macros and recipe will be linked down in the description box below. With that, let's go ahead and get started on this recipe for a ketogenic onion ring. All right, everybody, welcome to this recipe for our completely almond and coconut flour free keto onion rings. So let's go ahead and get started here with our dry ingredients. And I also just have an onion right there, obviously. So to start things off, you're going to need a gallon Ziploc bag. And in there, we're just gonna combine all of our dry ingredients. So right here, I have two thirds cup or about 55 grams of an unflavored whey protein isolate. If you guys are ever curious about the ingredients that I use or wanna use the exact same one that I did, if you click the link in the description for the written recipe, you'll see hyperlinks on all the ingredients that'll take you to Amazon where you can buy the exact one that I used. Now, full disclosure, I do get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon to help support the channel, but it won't cost you any more money. So if you're gonna buy it anyway, feel free to do it that way. Next up, we have one third cup or between 40 and 45 grams of grated Parmesan cheese. This is not shredded, it's more of the powdered stuff. They refer to it as grated at the grocery store. This is what you need. So third cup or between 40 to 45 grams of that. Next up, we have one teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. Now go ahead and zip this bag up and just give it a quick shaking to combine all the dry ingredients. Now, if you don't have a Ziploc bag, you can totally use a bowl to do this step, but I just find this to be much easier and faster, and that's kind of what I'm all about on this channel is making these quick and easy. Even if it seems complicated, I try to keep them all very quick, under 15 minutes to make type recipes. So the gallon bag here really does the trick. So next, we're gonna take our onion. Now, we're just gonna use one small to medium onion. You guys can see the size of this one. I'm not talking a giant one or you're gonna run out of some of the batter. But uh, this kind of like baseball size onion is gonna do the trick. And then I've just sliced that into about half inch strips. Now go ahead and pop out all of the different layers of the onion. Towards the center, you may end up tossing that little piece that uh, really isn't good for much. Like that. So now we have the bag of the dry ingredients and our onions have been separated. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and put all of those onions inside of this bag of dry ingredients. and then just give it a shake to lightly coat all of the onion rings in flour. There's gonna be a ton not stuck to the onion rings, and that's definitely the point here, but you just wanna get a little bit over the wetter areas on the onion, it'll stick to no problem. Also, if you guys have been here for a while and you've seen me kind of film this style of video before, let me know what you think of this new camera setup. I have a different overhead rig and a different face camera kind of setup, so I apologize if I'm not looking right at it at all times. Uh, still taking some getting used to, but let me know if you like this new setup. It was a little bit expensive, but I think it'll produce better quality. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of these onion rings and uh, put them on this plate here, leaving the, all of the powder that we can in the bag, so just kind of shake them off a little bit as you take them out. So we can go ahead at this point and set the onion rings aside as well as uh, the dry ingredients, but keep them close by, you'll need them in the next step. So next up is our wet ingredients. So what I have here is one quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. And uh, forgive me guys, I will put it on the screen. I did not Google the milliliter equivalent before I started filming this, but I'll put it on the screen right now. So quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. One quarter cup of plain old water and one teaspoon of white vinegar. Essentially what I'm doing here is creating a keto buttermilk. I always hate when recipes call for buttermilk because then I've got to go try to find it. It's easier just to mix milk and vinegar. And since we don't really use milk on keto, cream and water is a great substitute. Now to this liquid mixture we have, we're just gonna dump the remaining contents of our bag of dry ingredients. So 
See what I mean? Make it easy. Use the same exact thing for the dredge that we actually use for the batter. Now give this a good mixing until you can beat out all the available clumps. You might see some clumping just because the uh, grated Parmesan is not very fine, but you don't want any large clumps of the protein powder is what I'm getting at. So just whisk this briefly. It should dissolve relatively easily. So now it is time to build the last little piece of our onion ring step here, which is the exterior coating that's gonna get really crispy. Now right here I have one cup or about 150 grams of a pork panko. You can buy this stuff pre-ground on Amazon, there will be a link in the written recipe, or you can just go down to your local grocery store, buy a cheap bag of unflavored pork rinds and stick them in the food processor to get that. You'll grind it till it's about you know that consistency. I've never messed it up and I've definitely walked away with that grinder on. So there's a tip to save a little bit of money. Now all we're gonna do is take that, add it to a bowl here, and then drizzle on two teaspoons of olive oil. This is just so that that exterior layer can get nice and crispy without getting dry. Now use a fork and just make sure this uh, oil gets evenly distributed across the pork rinds. Now here's a quick little tip. Just take about half of this olive oil and pork rind mixture and set it aside. That way as it starts to clump from the addition of the onion rings and batter to the pork rind mixture, you have a little bit more to add. That way uh, you're basically not ruining all of it if you get one in there that's just a little bit too wet. So just set aside about half of that and uh, add it in as you need it. All right, now it is time for the moment you guys have been waiting for, which is assembling the onion rings. Now right here, just so you guys know, I have a baking sheet lined with foil just for easier cleanup. And then on top of that is a uh, baking rack that I have sprayed with an olive oil spray. The baking rack lifts the onion rings off the tray, that way they can get cooked on all sides, there's even airflow. And then the spraying of the tray just makes it so the onion rings pop off nice and easily without your batter and coating getting kind of stuck and peeled off. So just make sure you kind of set it up like this, spray it with some olive oil or cooking spray, and you'll be good to go. Now the process is really quite simple, just select an onion ring, dip it in the wet batter, Give it a second to kind of drip a little bit of the extra off to preserve the panko as long as we can. Set it in the panko, and then just coat it. And if you've done everything right, you should have a beautiful looking onion ring coming out right there. Now, I don't really see a need to show you guys me doing the rest of them. Once you get good at it, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds per onion ring to coat them out. Uh, so it doesn't take too awful long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish all these up and then I will catch up with you guys right before they go in the oven. You know, I just had to put the camera back on after I've done a few of these because I was thinking about it. This recipe is accidentally carnivore with the exception of the onions. So if you wanted to make like carnivore mozzarella sticks or maybe even calamari rings, you could totally do that using the same setup. Anyway, let me finish uh, getting these all coated. All right, everybody, that did not take too long at all. And all of my onion rings are now coated. There were a few that I decided not to just because they were really small or they were broken, but we went ahead and coated the ones that we wanted to bake. And as a note, it's okay to kind of nest them if you need a little bit more space. Just make sure they're not touching, otherwise they will stick together. And this goes without saying, if there's a hole in the coating like there is on that one, when it bakes, there is going to be a hole in the coating. I know, really obvious, but just wanted to make sure that was clear. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and bake our onion rings. I've tried this in an air fryer. Baking it actually seems to work better in this case. So to bake these, we're gonna preheat our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. That's roughly 220 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna bake them for between 20 and 24 minutes. They'll be starting to turn golden brown and maybe just a singe of dark brown on the very edges. That's about the point you wanna pull them. That way the onion still has texture, but it is cooked all the way through. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the oven. I'll put the finished product on the screen now and then I will catch up with you all for the taste test. So now that you guys have seen the recipe and the finished product, it is time for the taste test. So what I have right here is my tray that you guys just saw in the finished product. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm just saying, these things look absolutely amazing and uh, I know they taste just as delicious because uh, I've tried a few of them. Anyway, let's go ahead and try one on camera here. So I'm just gonna grab this guy right here off the top and uh, I want you guys to listen real carefully as I bite into this thing. You'll just hear this awesome, really thick, crunchy coating on there. Of course, I'm gonna dip it in some ranch because ranch is awesome. I'm serious, guys. These things are so freaking good. Let me see if I can get a close-up of what this looks like now that I've bitten into it. Hopefully that worked. Otherwise, I'll just put a photo up. 
in any case, there's a nice, thick, crunchy coating surrounding this onion. There's lots of flavor, and honestly, you wouldn't even realize that these are keto. In fact, I gave one of these to somebody, and they told me that it was a Burger King onion ring. Now, I wasn't really sure to take that as a compliment or an insult, because I haven't had Burger King's onion rings in probably five or six years. So you guys be the judge of that and let me know down in the comment section, was that a compliment or an insult? In any case, everybody, go ahead and check out the description box down below for the full written recipe and the macros. Go ahead and like this video if you have not. Leave any questions, comments, anything like that in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, please make sure you do that. So with that, guys, I will see you all in the next one.